What's that? Third one. I got one more coming up. So, a couple of years. McDonald's are graduating. Oh, three of them. Kids. I, I talked through them this year. Neely and Alex. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, and Rose. I mean Rose. I'm sorry, not Neely. Rose.
of chairs up here, but it's certainly shadier than down there. So we'll give you that. The more you do. Not quite the last one.
like I don't know if I'm just going like bum, 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 bum. For the pomp and circumstance. Yeah, okay. I just didn't tell him. My friends do not know that. I'm going to call all of
Good morning, everyone. I'm Philip Scott. I'm a member of the class of 1973, and I'm honored to serve as the clerk of the Board of Trustees of the school. This morning, I'll be reading from Proverbs uh, 18, verses 12 through 16. Before destruction, one's heart is haughty, but humility goes before honor. I can't do that. <laughs> Maybe closer, too. Good. I'll begin again. Before destruction, one's heart is haughty, but humility goes before honor. If one gives answer before hearing, it is folly and shame. The human spirit will endure sickness, but a broken spirit, who can bear? An intelligent mind acquires knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeks knowledge. A gift opens doors. It gives access to the great. Let's begin with a brief moment of silence. morning friends how does that work good you got me in the back great my name is Craig Sellers I'm the head of school here at Friends Central and I'm pleased to welcome you to our 173rd commencement ceremony honoring these fine young people behind me the graduating class of 2018 on behalf of our devoted board of trustees our talented faculty and staff, our accomplished alumni, and most importantly, on behalf of the extraordinary members of the class of 2018, welcome to our school and welcome to these commencement exercises. It's truly terrific to have so many friends and family with us this morning and to be unified in this extended moment of celebration focused on our graduates. I'd like to begin with important acknowledgments of gratitude. Thank you to our buildings and grounds, our safety and our food service crews who helped to make our campus breathtaking this morning and who make all of these logistics look so easy so we can enjoy our time this morning. Thank you. Thank you to the parents, grandparents, family and friends who had the generosity of spirit to collaborate with us over the years and who no doubt played a key role in getting this dashing group of people here on time this morning. Thank you. Thank you to the faculty who inspired this class to heights they could not have imagined without your kindness, your caring, and your passion. Thank you, faculty. And to the 96 simply incredible artists, athletes, academics, scholars behind me, let's set the stage together for those assembled this morning, and let's consider this peak moment in the context of your kindergarten through 12th grade journey. Many members of the class of 2018 attended our lower school and as part of a distinctive moving up ceremony, rang the bell over a plaque that says, ring for the joy of learning, ring for the love of friendship. I'd like every member of our distinguished lower school faculty to stand so we can acknowledge and thank you this morning. Many members of the class of 2018 walked across the stage at Shalcross Hall as a part of our middle school meeting for leaving ceremony. I'd like every one of our exceptional middle school faculty members to stand so we can thank you this morning. Woo! 
And yes, many members of the class. And finally, as much as everyone here knows the class of 2018 as passionate advocates for justice and fairness, and as much as your lower school teachers taught you to use your words, your friend central education taught you something even rarer, and that is to listen. In meeting for worship, you learned the power of listening to yourselves and to others, a gift that is at the core, the nub of Quaker education and one that will continue to di distinguish you as scholars, athletes, artists, friends, and family members for the rest of your lives. We are filled with pride this morning about the class of 2018. They let their lives speak. And in that eloquence, we know them as people who will go forward to peacefully transform the world. And further to that, I'd like you now to get to know and hear from two members from the class of 2018. So they were selected for this honor by their classmates, and that speaks volumes. So to speak with us this morning, I would like Alexandra Fiorentino Swinton and Tristan Pasternak to come forward. Let's begin with Alexandra. Friends, welcome Alexandra Fiorentino Swinton. Good morning, graduates, teachers, families, and friends. My name is Alexandra Fiorentino Swinton, and I have the privilege of speaking for my classmates on this morning, the celebratory day of our life. Graduation is a celebration of the fact that we've made it, that we've pushed through the trials of growing up, the awkwardness of puberty, and the horror of standardized testing, and have been deemed ready to face the world. I'd like to first take a moment to acknowledge all those who won't have the celebratory moment. Teenagers whose circumstances overshadow their untapped capacity or whose lives were taken before they could shine. As we are allowed the privilege to blossom, we have a responsibility to acknowledge those whose potential has been cut short. May we please take a moment of silence to acknowledge all living and departed who will not have the celebratory moment. Last week, an adult asked me why I chose the college I chose as every single adult for the last six months has done. Every time I give the same automated response about curriculum, opportunity, and environment, but I know what they really want to know. 
what kind of person am I and what do I value? And the fact that a lot of adults think they can classify the character of a student by their institution says a lot about how our environment or community can affect us all. However you feel here sitting in your last moments as a Friend Central student, there is an undeniable fact that your time here has shaped you into the person you will be when you leave in about an hour. I'm cautious of losing my classmates by bringing up memories of the torturous college application season, but for an application I was asked to substitute earth, wind, and fire with four other essential elements. And when I heard that question, I thought about it in the context of this school since the first day I read it. I thought, what is at the root of a Friend Central experience? For one, the school teaches us how to take our lives into our own hands and make what we want using the tools of immense opportunity we are given. This, through the good and bad experiences, Friend Central has taught us that if we see a problem, if we don't like the direction we're heading, if any wrong is being done, it is our task as people with agency to take the problem and reshape it ourselves. A perfect example is the school itself. The school is not without its flaws or missteps, but there's something so encouraging about it that inspires countless students to take responsibility for making it better in a multitude of areas. Students work tirelessly on creating music, shows, events, and clubs for others to enjoy and for them to be exposed to the passions of their peers. It would be all too easy to simply sit with our arms crossed and be bitter about the things we don't like for four years, but Friend Central students take the time to challenge our peers, teachers, and administrators because we believe in the vision and potential of the school. Having the responsibility to spearhead change may seem like kind of a harsh responsibility to put on teenagers, but the state of the world demands that we both keep our eyes open and be actively looking outside of ourselves. Similarly, Perspective is another core takeaway from our time here. It's evident from all the teen movies and It Gets Better campaigns that just about everyone knows that high school is tough. You're challenged to plan out your life and decide who you want to be in a future that seems light years away before you can even vote. You have to deal with being relentlessly challenged in academic, social, and societal arenas. But perhaps most difficult is being challenged in your values and your opinions. I can safely say that every one of us up here has faced that challenge, as passionate opinions and resulting disagreements have been a very prevalent part of our time here. We, as a class, have been particularly passionate about many social issues and have brought them to the forefront of school-wide discussion. There's no quantifiable measurement of how much bravery it takes to share your personal perspective in hopes of reaching another person's heart and I commend every single one of my peers on being so fearlessly open with their experiences, opinions, and beliefs. A more literal essential element of the Friend Central experience is meeting for worship. In the Quaker tradition, a weekly space for reflection through silent worship or a public message. In the lower school, it's mostly an opportunity for little kids to get up and talk about how amazing their parents and friends are. And as we get older, meeting was more and more about being truly moved to speak. The first and only time I ever stood up and spoke in meeting, I sobbed in, approximately all three, in front of approximately all 360 of my peers. It was the last meeting of junior year, and many students were sharing messages about teachers they loved that were leaving at the end of that year. The meeting was coming to a close, and so I shot up out of my seat to make sure my lit teacher, Montgomery Ogden, was acknowledged before he left for Costa Rica. I had always felt so seen, heard, and known in his class, and I needed those who never had him as a teacher to appreciate that. As soon as I tried to put into words what being in his class meant to me, I suddenly lost it and fell apart into tears, choking out my words of thanks. And when I looked back, he was crying too. There was such an overwhelming wave of respect and love in that room, with so many teachers being lauded by the living proof of their success as educators. The fact that so many students felt so championed by teachers and needed to make sure that the school was acknowledging them is nothing short of astonishing. That meeting represented everything about this school that keeps me in love and makes me hopeful. I don't know if the things I've spoken of are unique or special to a Friend Central experience. I don't have any other experience to draw on. What I do know is that the essence of this school its values, its people, and its capacity for change has brought me back every year for 13 years. I don't think it really matters whether what we found here exists somewhere else. 
What really matters is that everyone sit sitting behind me received it here, grew here, contributed here, and are graduating alongside me today. I'm so proud to say that I've seen shining moments from each and every one of them that has kept me inspired to learn and hopeful for the future. I was recently reminded of one of my favorite parts of my time here. In lower school, we would sing at the, at the end of every meeting for worship, and one line always stuck with me. May the kindness which we learn light our hearts till we return. I want to say thank you to my peers who have brought kindness and compassion to my heart every day, and thank you to all the parents, families, and teachers that help create every single one of these dynamic individuals. And I have to say, walking down that aisle this morning, seeing all of you smiling up at us, it made me really feel like everything was ahead of us and that all of you were behind us. And you're all really rooting for us, and I think that's what makes this place special. Congratulations, everyone, and I wish you the very best in your next chapter of life. Thank you, Alexandra. Friends, Tristan Pasternak. Good morning, everybody. How we doing? Woo. Feels good out there? All right, yeah. It's kind of hot up here, but that's OK. I'm hanging in there. All right, well, my name is Tristan Pasternak, and I'm honored to have the privilege to speak on behalf of all the incredible individuals of the class of 2018. So I'd like to start off my message with a simple testament to the extraordinary qualities of everyday life. We become so accustomed to the beauty of our daily lives, it is easy to grow blind and overlook all that surrounds us. So sometimes it takes a fresh, of, a set fresh of eyes, a fresh set of eyes, there we go, okay. <laughs> a new perspective to shed light on a subject in order to appreciate it anew. So see where I'm going with this? Behind me sit some of the most exuberant, intelligent, and inspiring individuals I've met in my entire life. And I say that with 100% honesty. Many of them have known one another for much longer than I have known them. In fact, all of them do, except me. And you, Josh Friday. You too, Max Foot. what's up? Um, <laughs> I cannot even fathom the privilege it must have been to grow up alongside this group of people, as even my short two years with them has changed my life forever and will continue to shape how I interact with the world. To truly capture the experience of meeting all these incredible people, I'd like to describe my coming to Friends Central our junior year, like a beautiful image slowly coming into focus, and use it as a frame to allow you all to appreciate yourselves and one another through the eyes of an astonished observer. Some of my first experiences with FCS were marked by total awe and wonder. What is this magical place? Why is everyone so cool? How are Frankie's outfits so amazing? Seriously, tell me where you shop. Oh my God, why is that coffee machine more expensive than my car? I, I have no idea. I still don't know that, okay. <laughs> then slowly, the more time I spent in this unbelievable wonderland, the canvas of what FCS could possibly be filled more and more into a beautiful masterpiece. A simple conversation with a fellow former classmate of mine ignited this burning curiosity in my mind the summer I was admitted to Friends Central School. The conversation went something like this, okay? He was surprised I still existed. And then when I explained, yes, I exist at FCS, he stopped dead and asked me, wait, is that the place where they do that weird Quaker worship thing, like the silence and all that? And yes, we do that weird Quaker worship thing. But the phrase is what lingered in my mind, the idea of the place where. And every day, each experience I had as I embarked on my journey with FCS further filled in the blank, further answered the question of the place where. One of the very first observations I remember making is that Friends Central is the place where students thank their teachers after every class. It only took a few class periods to realize that this was commonplace, that the kids at the school truly appreciate and respect their time in this setting. As a newbie, I was absolutely blown away by this display of mutual gratitude for the shared space and time with the incredible teachers at this school. 
So, bit by bit, I noticed more and more about this place. Okay, so Friends Central is the place where students hold the door for one another. That's good. Wow, this place is where students stay after class just to keep discussing ideas with their teachers long after the block has ended. But most notably, I've come to learn that Friends Central is a place where they welcomed with warm and open arms a new, completely bewildered, and still kind of confused student into their community their junior year, and I'm eternally grateful. Of all the small nuances that complete Friends Central, I've come to learn the single most distinguishing factor in making the school the magical, unbelievable place it is, is that it is the place where the class of 2018 exists. I'm still going. Yeah, give it up. They're awesome. Okay. Without these individuals, my experience with the school would not have been the unforgettable, life-changing experience that it has been. The people sitting here with me today are what make FCS and its community a true place of beauty. These faces are what complete the portrait of Friends Central School that I have been searching for since I arrived here last year. The growth of my amazement continued as this miraculous place came further into focus the closer I got with my peers. Friends Central is the place where the students are the leaders. I realized in awe that my peers lead clubs, run assemblies, and send super official emails to our whole grade to coordinate events like real adults. I was like, whoa, emails? That's way before us. <laughs> Carmela, I remember just one visit to a club of yours left me absolutely speechless. Where are you, girl? Okay. <laughs> I don't know if you've thought twice about your lecture on Supreme Court precedents and amendments regarding privacy for our moot court case, but I sure did. <laughs> when you run for president, please remember I shouted you out in our commencement speech, okay? <laughs> it's true. Just you wait. <laughs> Only at Friends Central School would a group of students be willing to come to school early every Friday morning just to practice jazz with Mr. Bradley. The students care and they give it their all and together we create a special place of expression and a dedication every Friday morning. Teenagers willingly deciding to give up sleep, not something you hear about, no. That's how you know that something isn't an obligation but a passion. All in all, no group of young people has ever made me laugh harder, think deeper, and push farther than this group of people that I have the honor to graduate with here today. I have felt the true warmth and kindness from each person up here, and the community that we have all shared is a place that only exists here now, a family that each of us contributes to with our own special spirit. I don't think at any other place I could have seen a student teacher stapling, stapler juggling display at assembly, that was really impressive, or a killer foam head dance routine, all of these bright, shining spirits of each person, yet alongside the explosive, all-inducing intelligence of each young mind in the classroom. The energy these kids bring to their life is equally contagious in an academic setting as it is in a simply friendly exchange about their day. In everyday interactions, as well as that weird Quaker thing called meeting for worship, each of us has shared and witnessed true displays of emotion, contemplation, and grit during our time together. I've seen my fellow students stand up and speak out when they knew there was something that had to be said. I've seen the compassion each student expresses for one another and the fiery curiosity which with, which with, with which they drive class, discussions, and their individual lives. What we share is extraordinary, something unlike anything else on earth. I believe the world is a better place after having seen what I have seen at Friends Central. I truly have faith in the world knowing these young people are about to enter it. Friends Central is the place where it all began. The world is the place where we will all go on to flourish. I love you all, and it has been a great ride. I can't wait to see, you all, see what you all accomplish. It has been amazing. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Tristan. Friends, I would like to invite Mariama Richards, our Assistant Head of School for Academic Program, to come forward and introduce our faculty speakers today. Mariama.
Good morning, everyone. So, not like we need to further amplify what makes this school different, but one of the things that is central to choosing our speakers from the faculty pool is to see who has a graduating senior. And there's a very specific process that goes into it. If it's their last child, you know, you have to be really thinking about this. And Craig Sellers put some time into trying to understand kind of who's up this year. And it turned out that we had two people that this would have been their last senior graduating, um, of which they are both two extraordinary individuals that teach your children every day. And, um, and as I reflect on these two people, I mean, come on, this was like the, the power punch. I mean, this was the way it was supposed to be. You know, I'll tell you from my lifetime, I had a science teacher named Miss Roundtree. She was great. She used to make us collect 100 leaves, 100 seeds. Did you all ever have to do that project? It's like death. Um, but like, she's the person who always stood out to me because I was willing to do that tedious work for her. And then I had a Latin teacher and his name was Mr. Martinez. He was also the ESL teacher at our school and he was really distinguished and thoughtful and he was one of those folks that you could always count on wearing a suit every day to work. Um, but he, you know, he tried to teach me Latin. It's not my forte, but I tell you, he actually moved the crowd. But I'll tell you this, that the two people that you're gonna hear from today way outstretch the bounds of Miss Roundtree or Mr. Martinez in every possible way. And I know this because, yes, we could say that John Gruber has worked here as a science teacher for 26 years, or that Margaret Somerville has worked in the language department teaching not only Prima Lingua, a curriculum she created from scratch, but all, yeah, she did, um, but also Latin, and it's been here for 19 years. Um, but that's just like the minimal piece of work. So as you all know, that whenever I get prepared for this speech, I have to talk to their children, right? Because that's part of the reason why they're up here. And so they should tell me lots of embarrassing things about their parents to make sure that they are properly put upon for this morning. And so what I learned about Mr. Gruber is A, that he's a photographer, um, that he is a tea and coffee lover, that he is a former amateur pilot who built his own plane. I mean, come on, John, really? You just must outshine us at every moment, correct? Okay, um, he is a Zen Buddhist priest. Yes, I will repeat that, a Zen Buddhist priest. And on common in common conversations with him, he tells me about some practice where he's gonna be silent for like three days. I can't even imagine, and I think you all can see that. I can't do that. Um, he is a world traveler. He's an expert at both plants and animals. He can name every species for the most part in Latin. Biking, hiking, a spicy foods expert. I imagine the types of hot sauce you have, maybe like Beyonce in your side bag. Um, and he's an artist and storyteller. Beyonce should be a part of every speech. You know this, right? Um, or then we go to Margaret Somerville, right? Who is a minister. She's a minister, a baker, a knitter, amazing tea drinker. Apparently, you're all into teas. Um, she knows six languages, English, French, Latin, Hebrew, modern, and ancient Greek. I didn't even know there was a difference. Um, and on top of it, she's an alumna which means that she has been on this campus for no less than 33 years. That's an effort. So if I would create a Venn diagram that would actually show the importance of their combination, A, they're both tea lovers, right? They both know Latin, right? They're both quite spiritual, being a priest and a minister. But at the core, they are teachers, and they are phenomenal at it. And it is a calling, as we all know. And they answer the call every day. I want to introduce to you John Gruber and Margaret Somerville. Thank you, Mariama. John and I stand here very aware that after this moment, things will never be the same. 
We stand here, a Latin teacher and a science teacher, a pastor and a priest, parents of Friends Central alums, and parents of two graduates who have been coming here to this place with us since they were born. We stand here today conscious of the reality that after this moment, things will never be the same. And we recognize, we recognize what a gift it is that we're all gathered together at this time and in this way, that we have the privilege of this presence together in this particular moment. What a remarkable gift this is. And we pause here in this moment to acknowledge how unlikely we all are and how precious this moment is that we have. We also know that not everyone that started this journey with us or accompanied us for some part of the road that we've traveled is here with us today. And so it's worth remembering and honoring with our presence both those who are in this space physically and those that we hold in this moment in our hearts who are present with us because we hold them here with us. Today, class of 2018, you have gathered around you your classmates and teachers, your family and friends, a particular configuration of people that's unlikely to be gathered in this way at any other time. We're bearing witness to an utterly unique, once in a lifetime moment. People who are here filled with joy and in your honor, celebrating your accomplishments. And you, all of you, all of you, you will not be here again in quite this same way. You won't be here the way you were this past September for another set of experiences in these classrooms and all of these spaces indoors and out. You have all reached a fairly momentous transition point. At the same time, as we step through our lives moment by moment, we also realize that this, it will never be the same again, is always true. That realization that every second of each day that we walk in this life is unique, never repeated, that can open us up to the privilege of being right here where we are. There are lifetimes and universes in each unique moment. And it's our own engagement with awareness that creates our individual and collective experience of the present. Now, it may have seemed at points along the way that it was all about getting to this day, like it was all about this ultimate completion reaching the summit at the end of our senior year, the college choice, the grand finale. But now that we stand here on this summit together, looking out across so many other peaks in this mountain range, we realize that it has been about all the moments along the way, the beautiful, ordinary, everyday moments that made up the never-ending stream of now that series of present moments that held us each day, day after day. Some of them have been soaring moments of shared glory. Some have been a realization of collective struggle, a pushing of our community to engage the struggle. You have challenged us and delighted us you have poured your life energy into unforgettable productions on stage and championships, concerts, your showcase, events that have raised our awareness. And then some have been quiet moments, alone or just with one or two others, walking across the grass of the Felsen Common, climbing the stairs to the second floor of the main building to sign in, and passing that Tiffany window again, stopping at the register to pay Mary Claire or Joanne or Mary for a bagel or a cookie or a soup, 
waiting for that snow day tweet, <laughs> carrying the water cooler back to Linton, or even a little further back, dumping all the stink bugs out of your bags after Echo Hill, <laughs> being the line leader for the week or one to sit on the facing bench. Every experience has woven us together into this community that we are. We have heard many of you speak at different times and in different ways about this sense of belonging. So often on our journey, we hold deep questions about how we fit in and what our place is. Questions about who we are ourselves and about the wider family of being that holds us. And we know, we know that not everyone has experienced the same sense of belonging and connection along the way. There are moments or even whole spans of time where we may feel alienated or distant, separated from the place and people that surround us. So we ask, what is it that calls us back to one another? What is it that creates that space of deep connection, of acceptance, validation, acknowledgement, and support? So graduation is really an extraordinary threshold. We call it a gateless gate, a step from this side of something to the other side. And it's time to begin moving, moving from seeking these places of belonging to creating the ground of belonging for ourselves and for others. The world so desperately needs your effort in this work of opening up the ground of connectedness, fostering deeper relationships of universal care for each other. It's time to begin to step into roles of increasing accountability for that which is larger than ourselves, and we place this task before you, and we ask you to carry it forward. In so far as you all have created a space of belonging for yourselves here, it has been a part of something larger that will continue to resonate even as you move on from this place of belonging. So maybe we're not a bubble, a place where we all need to feel we belong. Maybe we're an incubator. Perhaps this work of building deep and meaningful relationships of respect and care, of centering ourselves in truth-seeking and integrity, perhaps it's all prototyping the energy, the spaces, the feelings that are waiting to be created in the wider world through your hands. We do this for our time and place, for ourselves, and for each other while we're here. There are teachers and friends here who love you, deeply love you. But we also do this so that we can learn how to hold that space for others in wider and wider circles of care and truth and justice in the world beyond City Avenue. So we place this task before you and ask you to carry it forward. It is time to begin to step into roles of increasing accountability for that which is larger than ourselves. So it is not a question in our minds that you all belong here. You have shaped this community into what it is in this unique moment and what it has been in every unique moment along the way. And yes, others will come who will add their voices and push us in new directions and the shape of this place will be different from what it is right now in this moment. But you, you all will be shaping new communities, belonging in new spaces, be present be present in each of those moments, as present as you are here right now, remembering the privilege of this presence in each particular moment, but also be conscious that in each new moment is a lifetime, a universe, and Friend Central will be indelibly woven into it. So class of 2018, 
we wish for you deep peace in the moments of joy and accomplishment. Deep peace in the moments of turmoil and challenge. Deep peace as you walk forth from this place today, loved. Thank you, John. Thank you, Margaret. That was beautiful. Friends, it's now time to award the diplomas. Will the graduating class please rise? And will Mr. Bill Kennedy, our upper school principal, rise to help begin the process? Good morning. Congratulations to the class of 2018 and their families. <laughs> Sophia Lee Akione. <laughs> Asia Naima Adson. Jenna Aureas. <laughs> Maxwell Allen Bender. <laughs> Ethan Henry Berger. Matthew Moses Berger. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Alexandra Fiorentino Swinton. <laughs> Margot Cecile Berland. Taylor Chanel Murphy Brazil. Andrew Sidney Broadus. Ethan Edward Broadus. Eliza Jane Case. Galen Patrick Cassidy. Yuchang Chen. Satori Lati Chin. <laughs> Zachary Mark Cohen. <laughs> James. Andrew Cooper.
Selena K. Copeland. Claire Duncan Koss. Morgan Anna Crowley. Brianna Lee Cypress. Dale Martin Decatur. Ava Margaret Duane. Hope Emily Derlovsky. Caleb T. Epstein. Matthew Stephen Feeback. Christopher Price Fletcher. Maxwell Kevin Foot. Ava Rose Foreman. Jordan Wilson Friday. Joshua Carson Friday. Eva Teresa Gonzalez. Catherine Alexi Green. Dane Sinjin Greisiger. Jesse Daniel Gross. Julian Isak Lindgren Gruber. Peter Kentaro Galachi. Anjali Gupta. Madison Marie Harris. Joshuan Huang. Shane S. Canner. Sydney Elizabeth Kaplan.
Sonia Rahul Kapoor. And now Tom McFarlane, the upper school dean of students, will come and do the rest of the names. Well done, Bill. Thank you. Emily Tess Elizabeth Katz Nelson. Mira Ray Kaufman Rosengarten. Ezra Cole Halsey Kruger. Gabriel L. Kuziatin. Wexler Abraham Levides. Ryan Isaac Lynn. Tristan Jacks Pasternak. Emily Hannah Lori. Jacob William Lynn Pilevsky. Gianna Georgia Matika. Alexander Aiden McDonald. Amelia Marie McDonald. Rose Bridget McDonald. Michelle Caroline Maline. Miles Nathan Maline. James Walter Myers. Kevin Nicholas Montresor. Ture Ishmael Mosley Banks. Christopher Anthony Palmieri. Henry Robert Platt Brannan in absentia. <laughs> Catherine Davies Rapley. <laughs> Annie Laura Scott Roberts. Lucas Gordon Robinson Barr. <laughs> Brian Michael Rudolph. <laughs> Brian. 
Carmela Joel Saya. Sarah Livingston Schuritzel. Anna Shep. This way. Danielle Sophie Schweitzer. Claire Francis Sellers. <laughs> Sophie Ann Shack. <laughs> Karishma Singh. Alina Sage Sissel. <laughs> Nadia Olivia Taranta. <laughs> Timon Kavi Favor. Nicholas Creed Tuverson. <laughs> Caroline Penn Weaver. <laughs> Joshua M. Weinstein. Gabrielle Alyssa Wilkinson. <laughs> Taylor Eliana Imelda Williams. <laughs> Jerry Chu. Ihao Yan. <laughs> so say Yapoyan. <laughs> Tian Wei Angela Chan. Taiwan Jun. Thank you, Mr. McFarland. Thank you, Mr. Kennedy. If we could have the audience rise, because I would like to present to you the Friends Central graduating class of 2018. Friends Central.